Well, welcome to this resource on how to acquire UV visible spectrum and how to select suitable cells and solvents when you want to run a spectrum. So this is a typical UV visible spectrometer. There's a sample chamber where we place the reference and sample cells, a control panel on the screen. When obtaining a spectrum, you should always record the instrument details in your lab book. First we have the main menu. There are a range of options available and in this experiment we will be selecting the spectrum option. We press mode to obtain this menu if it's not already available and then 2 to select the spectrum option. We now need to enter our parameters for this experiment and again these should be recorded in your notebook. We're going to change the scanning range in this experiment so we select 2 to highlight the scanning range and enter in the wavelength ranges required using the keypad. Enter toggles from one end of the scale to the other. We select 3 to change the absorbance range from 0 to 2. Before acquiring a spectrum we need to zero the instrument to remove any absorbance due to solvent present. To do this we place solvent, in this case water, in both cells and put a cell in each of the reference and sample compartments at the back and front of the instrument. Make sure to align the clear side of the cell with the UV beam which is parallel to the front of the lab bench. The sample cell is always at the front of the instrument. Press auto zero to zero the instrument. So here's our sample. When the zero is complete, remove the solvent cell and place your sample in the sample holder. This is always at the front of the instrument. Close the lid and press start stop to acquire your spectrum. The instrument will scan the absorbance of your sample across the wavelength range you have selected, in this case 800 to 350 nanometers. If the sample absorbs in this region, we'll see an absorbance peak, and very often we want to get the value, the y-axis absorbance value, of this peak. To obtain this, we press F2 on the keypad to select data processing, and then 3 to select peak. The instrument will list the wavelengths where the peak occurred, only one in this case, and give the absorbance at this value. You'll need to note these values down. So the question arises, how do we select suitable cells and solvents for our samples? We need a cell and solvent that will not absorb where our sample absorbs. And there are three common types, quartz, marked with a Q or a QG, glass, marked with a G or an OG, and plastic. Note that each cell has a clear side, which should be aligned with the beam, and the translucent side. We always handle cells by the translucent side, so that our fingerprints do not distort the result. So in this section, we look at where each of these cells absorb. We want to select the full UV visible range, so 200 to 800 nanometers is entered. First up is the plastic cell. These are cheap disposable cells. We see that, they have a, that it has a cell window right across the visible range. It does not absorb in this region. But when we get into the UV region, the cell absorbs strongly. It cuts off. We call this the cut-out wavelength, and it means that the plastic cells, which have a wavelength of about 300 nanometers, can only be used for samples which have an absorbance at longer wavelength than this. Next up is glass. We repeat the experiment and note again that glass has a window right across the visible region, but again it cuts off in the UV region, at about 350 nanometers. Glass has a narrower window than plastic, but has the advantage that it's not dissolved by organic solvents, as plastic can be. Finally, it's quartz. We see that quartz is the ideal cell. It has a window right across the UV visible range, and is not absorbed anywhere in this region. It's expensive, and that's why we don't use it as often as we might. Quartz's cutoff is actually around 190 nanometers. Now let's look at some solvents. First up is water. Water doesn't absorb at all in the UV visible region, so it's ideal along with quartz cells for samples that absorb in the UV once they are soluble. Ethanol also has a broad window, although it absorbs at around 280 nanometers. Therefore, it's suitable for, for compounds that will absorb above this region. 
Hexane is a non-polar solvent and again has a very broad window, so it's suitable for non-polar compounds which absorb in the UV region. The cutoff is very close to 200 nanometers. Finally, acetone, which is very good at absorbing, which is very good at dissolving organic compounds, is a poor solvent choice for UV visible spectroscopy because it absorbs around 350 nanometers, where many organic compounds themselves absorb. So we've looked at cells and solvents, and each has their own distinct advantages and disadvantages. Choosing a suitable cell or solvent should be made considering what requirements you have based on your sample.